Good evening and welcome to Canhammer, your stop for Warhammer 40k from the Great White North. Uh, today's show is episode 85. It's a 40k show. We're going to talk all about CCBB, which is a tournament that we just ran and you guys have heard all about the last couple of months. We're going to bring back the lore review uh, segment. We're going to finish up our new Space Marine lores and we're going to do the Fulmination one, which is the one that we've missed. We're also hoping to do a Pimp My List if we have time. We're going to do a Necron uh, collection kind of Pimp List, which should be really interesting because we have a couple... Uh, I guess pretty prevalent uh, players joining us. So with that, I am Chris at Canhammer Chris on Twitter. I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Logan. That's at OnePlusLogan on Twitter. And we have two guests tonight joining us from Quebec City, Quebec, Mr. Max Dubois, known as the French douche. Uh, that's that, I guess. Uh, do I need more? Do I need <laughs> no, well, everyone already knows. knows that. We can, we'll come back to you. And then joining uh, us from London, Ontario, Mr. Dan Platt. A.K.A. the Danimal. <laughs> yeah, that took off way too fast when we got back. It was, uh, <laughs> was terrifying. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So, I guess what we normally do is, because uh, it's both Dan and Max's first time on the podcast, so we usually start off just giving a little heads up. This is where you can introduce yourself, Max. So we'll start with you, Max. Like, how'd you get in the hobby? What kind of armies you play? And just tell us about yourself. Let the people know what you got going on. All right, so uh, I got into the hobby because I started working at the game store. I knew nothing about nothing. I was just like randomly, oh, this this looks like fun. Uh, I started painting stuff. Right now, I play whatever is OP in Warmer 40K. I don't like, I don't practice. I just have to find something that's good and that will carry me to to win. <laughs> that's that's my strategy. So far, that's so good. Uh, yeah, strategy, man. Like, it's all tactics, and, um, bro. Yeah. And uh, I'm opening up my own store in Quebec City this month or next month, and that's that's that for me. Nice, that's, congratulations! That's what I do. So, do you, you. do you want to plug your store? You want to plug the name? Why you started? Oh yeah, it? it's going to be called uh, La Boutique Elfire because Elfire is my thing. Yeah, it's going to be in Quebec. It's going to be the best thing ever. Uh, if you're on social media, uh, just, you can find me, Max Dubois. I post that shit everywhere. I'm going to spam it. I swear a lot. Is that a problem? Is that going to be a problem? Uh, that's fine. No right, issues. Right. I, uh, I I learn English by swearing, so. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> tends uh, to be. You learned it by watching the Terminator on TV. Yeah, that's, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's uh that's fortuitous that's timing because didn't another big gaming store just uh just go out of business in Quebec? Yeah, it's it's the one I'm working at currently is is closing or the the shop the store owner is like leaving the oh, okay. hobby. So, I'm just wow. taking it taking it tried and just doing my thing I guess I've been doing that for 10 years so oh. just keep doing what I do good stuff inherit a customer base good way to start a business <laughs> so yeah that's that's me man that's what I do awesome and then so we're gonna go to Dan I, we've talked about you a lot but just, how'd you get in the hobby let the people know what you do because you're uh, a pretty big legend around here, bro. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, believe it or not, the way I got into the hobby, I was probably uh, like 15, 14. I got into Lord of the Rings. I got into Lord of the Rings like hard. I played it like all the time. I had almost every model. It was fantastic. I bought some random 40K models. Actually, I got like super into Eldar, bought 10 of every single aspect, but I didn't even own a codex. I just collected it because... I apparently had nothing better to spend money on. <laughs> uh, turned 18, found girls for a while, got back into it after that, and then uh, I've been playing 40K since, I guess, like seven years now, back into like a competitive side of things, and I play in a lot of tournaments, so that's my main focus as far as 40K. Um, yeah. I do paint a lot, I do love the fluff, don't get me wrong, but I play a lot of Warhammer. <laughs> so you 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 play what three times a week type thing? Uh, somewhere around there, probably somewhere around there. Definitely at least um like small games just for fun, but um, yeah. tournament stuff probably at least once a week. Nice, it's pretty good, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we'll move on. So the first thing we like to do is we like to just kind of give us a quick summary of what kind of hobby progress we've been making. So I'm gonna start with uh, we'll start with you, Logan. What kind of hobby progress? All right. So my hobby, sort of the same as last time, is all in boxes. Uh, that said, I did manage to get some new pickups uh, at Capital City Bloodbath and the Gamer Garage Sale and uh, just some other stuff I had ordered. So I've now got two more Riptides waiting to be painted uh, that are put together. One's magnetized, the other one I need to magnetize. 
and I've got a third ghost keel. <laughs> so I, I own three ghost keels now, and none of them are, are put together at all. So <laughs> I've, I've been waiting to get that third one before I run the optimized stealth cadre. So I now now have everything I need to run that list. So that's cool. that's me. And I'll have more in like probably by the next episode. I'll have my paint set up again, and I'll actually be able to talk about hobby. <laughs> so uh, we'll go to you, Max. What what kind of what projects are you on the go right now? Uh, I'm trying to finish my demons because I sold them like pending pending me finishing them actually because I played with a three color army for a while. Uh, barely three color was my thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but some guys are like, "Hey, if you finish them, I'm gonna buy them." So I'm like, "Yep." Yep. So um, I've I've done that and not much else. I because of the the store thing, I don't think I I might be able to play for a while. So uh, I'm quiet on the hobby front, I guess. Fair. Right That's on, D- Danny. You got anything going? Danny. <laughs> uh, I, I, Danny boy. <laughs> we just change your name every ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be something called different now. Yeah, funny. Um, lately, I finished the war convocation for. Uh, ETC. That was my last big 40k project. Now I'm working on my Stormcast army, actually. Nice. Uh, pretty excited about that, actually buying way too much Stormcast, like way, like almost all of them now. Um, <laughs> and now I have lots more to paint, so that's good. Right? <laughs> that's how that works, yeah. right? <laughs> and I find Stormcast like super relaxing to paint because it's like, they're chill, there's not a lot of details. That was like the worst. Like I hate models with like tons of pouches on them. Yeah, 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 like the Blood Angel models. All fancy or... models. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, fancy man. models, yeah. Yeah, that too, yeah, yeah. No, the Stormcasts are fun. actually really fun to paint. Yeah. Cool, so I went like full retard with my hobby, That's and I always... purchased, you're, you're going to hear something ridiculous. I went and I bought 40 fine cast flesh hounds <laughs> to go with my nine chariots of Zinch. I was reading on the internet that these bros are discontinued, but I ordered them last week and they came <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I was spamming like, oh, there's some trolling going on on this. Yes, uh, it was. Was. So I bought nine. So l- let's talk about why you bought nine chariots, though, because these are like the best, the the best worst kept secret in 40k in terms of pricing. Yeah, nine you don't buy nine. You don't play them. You just like, god damn it. No, 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 you buy the nine chariots, and then you get 18 screamers, 18 flamers. I'm oh, sorry, exalted flamers. You get 18 heralds, which you don't. Sorry, eight heralds, which you don't need. But you get 18 horrors as well. Yeah. So you get you I, basically get a demon army. I thought you meant the Slanesh chariots. Oh god, like, no. holy shit! Well, th- there was a guy <laughs> at Adepticon running that. He he was running the the, the double Slanesh thing with the exalt like the big chariots and the little chariots. I can't yeah. remember who it was. So, it was somebody whose name I know from from other yeah, tournaments. It was, uh, but it, Bill Kim. It, yeah, it's Bill Kim. Yeah, did so badly. <laughs> Like if that list works, it's on fire. But <laughs> I don't think it worked out too well for him there. But, yeah, well, uh, my, trick, but... I was gonna say my whole uh, motivation is there's uh, we're gonna break a little bit. Like Dan, and I I don't know how much Dan wants to talk about this, but uh, there's this new way to get on the ETC team for the Canadian, and it's basically uh, you got to kind of justify your position. I hope I'm saying that right, Dan. And so my whole thing was that I want to be the demon player because that's kind of what I'm going after. So I looked up, well, I already knew. I've been playing Demons a little while now, but I basically have everything to make the top six, four to six Demon builds every model. So, like, yep. if I need to test it out, I can just, you know, I'm going to fully assemble it in the next couple of weeks, and I'll be able to just do it all and hopefully be all that I can be with yeah, the how, how about that? How about that? You lend your army to somebody who, who actually can play. Oh! That would be oh. Cool. <laughs> Oh. And that should be considered. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just laying it out there. That hurt my, that hurt my feelings. Yeah, I mean, that hurt my feelings. He's just a 40k sponsor of the ETC team. He's gonna yeah, buy yeah, our exactly. Arms. I mean, hey, there you well. go. Yeah, good. There you go. The Italians did that, right? They had like a <laughs> staff painter or something. Yeah. Chris, yeah, Chris can be the the staff bank. I don't know. <laughs> no, bro. I'm gonna earn my spot, or I'm no. gonna die trying. There yeah, go. staff Formata. bank would definitely be uh, Caleb. Caleb's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to sponsor us. <laughs> That sweet, sweet Caleb bunny. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> cool. So we're going to move on to the news and new releases. This will be really quick. Uh, I usually do the AOS news, and there's one new thing, and it's, um, I can't even say this, Grom Brindel, the new White Dwarf. Um, yep. So basically they re-released one of the old uh, Slayer heroes uh, from near the end of 8th edition, and they're calling him the White Dwarf. And they just like... He, it's not even that nice of a paint job. I tweeted it. If you follow me at Cameron Chris on Twitter, you can see a picture of it. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Max. What do you think of this? I, 
the worst part is I think I heard somewhere that they flip the the mini 180 degree on the picture. Like they they just like reversed it, like just yeah. just so that it looked different. I, I don't think it's mm. like the mini is probably just this. I I think it's preposterous. Like uh, as I said, the mi the miniature is fine. It was one of my favorite model when it came out. Like I was like, oh, this guy's cool. But the fact that they're trying to hype it like it's a brand new white dwarf. No, shut up. Like you jacked yeah. up like the stat cards or whatever. Just that would be fine. But the fact they're trying to hype it as like the next the next best thing and the coolest dwarf ever is. Are they giving Are they giving it away as a free mini, or do you have to buy it? I want to say thirty dollars Canadian uh, is what. Um, I yeah, I, I was under the impression that you had to buy it. That's a shame. If it was a free model. That'd be fine. Aren't yeah. they giving something with the the white dwarf? The actual like, they, they are, yeah. Magazine? It's a bl bloodborne model, I think. Oh, yeah, all right. So I, I thought it was the dwarf. Yeah. It just made sense to me that was that they were giving out the dwarf. And that would make sense. That would make but, sense. It, it would make sense, and it would make like it would make sense that they did not like build a new model to give away. Like a hey, like yeah. we're giving you this free one. Just shut yeah. up, joy. But damn. Oh well. Yeah. Maybe you'll have a cool war scroll or something. Maybe some cool rules or something. Yeah, that's that's what I heard too. Like they jacked up the rules for this guy. So when you play Grumbrindal, he's like a, a badass. But you threw, you uh, just get to take your white dwarf and throw it at the opponent. <laughs> <laughs> that's the awesome. that, that, Roll it up, that, smack him on the face, bad dog. Like, you, you just like yeah, just yell at people. You have to whisper to one of your guy, or you, you, you spell it out. Yeah. Yeah. Free free lady. <laughs> Just like take all your old uh, Warhammer visions and just like use them. Like oh, you God. hold them up next to somebody and you can like not leave a mark and just punch them through your stack of visions. Give your opponents the cops paper can cuts. use them. The cop, the police departments in like Chicago are buying them up to beat people with. <laughs> That's been Trump's anyway, plan all along. We're gonna have to get get moving. I'm gonna pass it over to Logan to talk about the 40k rumors. All right. So for rumors, uh, it's actually been confirmed now. There's new chaos coming out next week. I think pre-order next week. Uh, so we got a new campaign book uh, with Karn and other stuff. I don't know. I'm not a fluff guy. Uh, Dan may know some more about this, but Karn is back, so that's cool. Uh, there's new formations, new psychic powers, which I'm really looking forward to, so that'll be cool. Uh, uh, yeah, it's apparently advancing the plot. It's a big, big campaign supplement, uh, so about the size, from from what I had heard anyway, in terms of story advancement, it's, it's big. It's like... Um, what was the one many many years ago? I have terror. It's like that yeah. that size of story advancement. So that this should be pretty cool. Yeah, this is supposed to be about the first battle of the thirteenth Black Crusade. There so you the go. first like engagement, like when Abaddon first like comes busting out of the Eye of Terror. This is supposed to be that book. Okay, it's gonna cool. be really That's good. That was really cool when that happened. That's oh, yeah. Kadia. Like yeah. the first step is always Kadia, right? It's usually Kadia. Yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be some outlier planets or something. You know, but... Kadia is usually the big. Like big siege thing, like yeah. When the, the original I Terror campaign, that thing was amazing. It was oh, yeah. so cool. Yeah, I still have my I Terror camp book around here somewhere. But nice. I have, I have a poster in storage somewhere. I, that was that was when I was over in France. I did that and uh, Armageddon, Battle for Armageddon. That was the other other oh, yeah. big one. Armageddon was Arm it. Armageddon was my favorite. Yeah, the Steel. What, what, what were the guys? The the Steel Legion or whatever they were called. The guards. Yeah, and the Speed Freaks. Yeah, yeah. It was the so first cool. time you had a mechanized so cool. army. In 40k. Yeah. Alright, anyway, moving along. Uh, so we got that. Death Watch is now out. Uh, we will be doing a full review of that on a later show. I don't think either Chris or I have our hands on it yet. Uh, but things are looking pretty cool. It's looking like a good allied force. It's uh, very glass cannon, so sort of like sky hammery, but with fewer gimmicks and more special weapons. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about that in another episode. And there's also a new void shield generator. So this one, this one's sort of confusing. Chris and I were talking about this before the show. So it's the same as the old resin model, but it's 120 bucks, and the old one was like 80 or something like that. And this is right after they just nerfed it into the ground with the uh, the draft FAQs. So it seems like a really odd time to release it because it's not going to sell that well anymore. I don't think. What do you guys think about this one? Uh, this is the first time I've heard of it. it. It's it's not the first time that they release like. They they nerf something and then they release it. But I don't I don't have like examples, Andy, but they did that a couple of times. Like something becomes insanely bad and then they release it. <laughs> like, well, I don't think it's insanely bad. It's not insanely I bad. Also, it's just not not an auto buy like it would have been. Yeah, I, mean, I don't yeah, exactly. I don't see it. 
like GW nerfed it though. Like ITC just made a couple rulings that made oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. Like like a lot of people played. Like if you shot it with grab, it just on a six, it got rid of them. No, like I, yeah, I, I suppose, I didn't but mean it like that, and and also I didn't think it was like the most OP thing in War Gear like ever. Like it was. Oh no, it wasn't. It was, but it was it was very like good. The Destroyer, right? Like yeah. I don't know what, what's the English equivalent for that, but like. If, if the player is bad, you're gonna beat him, like for sure with that thing. But it's pro a player you probably beat anyway, even if you're not playing that thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for Most sure. Most people had a way of getting through it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you would see. You that's that's as Dan just said. Like if like the battle company guys that took all grav, you could tell the guys that weren't prepared or didn't study the meta because they didn't bring the four guys with melted guns in a drop pod, or they didn't bring some kind of counter to it. So. Yeah. Like I, I used to plan my list around it and just oh, take yeah, Eldar yeah, and blow everything up. Yeah, oh, yeah and just win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just it, it, interesting timing. So if you want a void shield, there's now going to be an official model you can grab. Uh, if not, there are tons of really good alts out there. Um, Frontline Gaming made one. Uh, there's a bunch of different terrain studios that have made stuff for it. So lots of options if you're if you're looking. You know, I guess with the re-release too, they could in theory change the rules for it. They could. Uh, though I think. From the, the leaked bit from the magazine uh, about it, it still says to use the rules in Stronghold Assault. So maybe we'll see something new. Maybe there's something new in the campaign book. Maybe, maybe that's what yeah. we got. That so, make a lot of sense, yeah. yeah, we'll find anyway, out next week. I'm really week. happy I invested in the limited edition thousand only one. Really yeah, yeah, the exactly. They, well, good. They've it's only good done that, what, four times now? <laughs> yeah, <that's all. laughs> most of the, this is rare though most limited edition stuff really is limited edition like I have three limited edition marine figures and they're all still yeah but how many limited print, edition board games saying. do you have that were reprints from them none were they did they say the Space Hulk was limited edition yep oh okay. yeah then I have that one that's the only one I think in the reprint maybe I don't know yeah anyway uh, last but not least on the 40k side just general ITC news so we're going to talk about Bloodbass we won't talk about that right now uh, but I'm going to give shout-outs to our buddy Wes Pauly uh, in Edmonton. He just went to the Plains of War GT in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, got second place in terms of like win-loss draw scoring. Took home Best Imperial General. Uh, so congrats to him. He runs a, a, a very original, very cool list. Uh, did super well at Capital City Bloodbath as well. Uh, the only person to get higher than him was a Tau player running Monster Mash that went 5-0. and uh, the results for that are at Best Coast Pairings, and the event code is POWGT, if you want to check that out. Since you're a hardcore Tau player, like, what kind of monster mash? Because there's the two kinds, right? There's the right. Surge, and then there's the Riptide, like seven Riptides or nine Riptides, right? Yeah, so he was running the Double Storm. I don't don't have the exact list. I've just seen the model, so I have an idea what the, what the list was. Uh, it was Double Surge, uh, Riptide Wing with three Riptides, two naked crisis suits, a commander, marker drones, and two broadsides. So I'm guessing he dropped Feel No Pain off the Riptides to be able to take those uh, those two broadsides. So, I prefer Feel No Pain. But yeah, that's, I, I would too, good. but he won the tournament, so... Yeah, so, yeah, broadsides are, like, broadsides give you sort of a way around um, void shields as well, just because you're, you're able to glance them pretty reliably with that many shots, but I, I don't know why they were in the list. I don't know the player, but... Uh, yeah, congrats to him. Uh, the only other thing I know is he got like a zero on paint score. So, <laughs> but it looked like his army was painted pretty nicely. So I don't know what was going on with that. Anyway, cool. So we're gonna move along to event spotlight, and so we have Max here. Plug oh, your tournament, yeah. man. All right. So uh, yeah, I'm running the uh, tournament called the Quebec City Open. It's in September mm -hmm. at the end of the month, uh, weekend of the twenty third, I believe. Yeah, twenty third to twenty fifth. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Main events are, uh, there's Beer Hammer almost every night, because Beer Hammer's my thing. Uh, there's also Beer, whatever the game, like there's going to be Beer Wing for <laughs> X-Wing. Uh, <laughs> probably Beer of Sigmar or something like that, I haven't figured nice. it out yet. But, and Beer Mahords also, which is uh, a <laughs> nice. new thing. Uh, so that's my thing. The main event is a 40k double. There is no single this year, uh, this is the first year, and uh, it's, the format's going to change next year. Because now I'm gonna have a store, so uh, I, I can do much bigger stuff uh, in the future. So that's kind of nice. So um, X-Wing is a 32-player event. Warm Horde is a 32-player event. There's still spot left for both of these. Uh, 40K is a 32 team. There's still spot left. And Age of Sigmar is like an eight-man or something. It's a really small thing because the community is uh, not really that great in Quebec. 
but I'm hoping to make it grow uh, significantly in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, you can check out on Facebook. It's a Quebec City Open. And there's a link to a website. The address is really funky because it's a, it's a free website. And I, I don't want to spend my money on on a website. I want to spend my money on price pool. Ten bucks a year, bro. That's all you need for a website. But, no, no, uh, not when you're bad like me. Like, <laughs> you, have to, you have to pay extra like for the, the dumb people. Like, <laughs> if you click here, it does that. Oh, sweet. There you go. <laughs> I have um, child <laughs> cool. So yeah, we already announced your store, so we'll hand it off. Uh, Dan, do you want to announce anything that you got going on, business-wise or? Yeah, hold on, hold on. I, oh. I have the links. I posted the links every. I don't know how to post. I'll put I'll put them in post. Twitch chat, and we'll have them in the show oh. notes as well for My man. Uh, YouTube. So the yeah, so the store is, is going to be linked everywhere. So please check it out. Uh, you'd be amazing, okay. and thank you. All right, Dan, off you go. Uh. I don't have anything to announce. This is yeah, you don't want to you don't want to plug anything. Cool. No, so, I don't think so. Oh, uh, the the one thing uh, we do have our etc stuff going on. Um, so what we have decided, if you are Canadian and are really awesome at Warhammer or just a cool person, uh, we are how we have open applications. Yes, definitely you, Max. You can't be two people though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can apply to become a member of the etc team. Um, definitely, we're gonna be we're gonna be tossing out the application actually tomorrow or no on Wednesday, no Thursday, uh, right? I thought it was Thursday. It's the first, right? Yeah, it's the first. Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever September first is um, that day, and we will be um, accepting applications that day. Go to ETC Team Canada on Facebook, and you guys can talk to us there. You guys can we'll have the application tossed in there. And uh, make sure to apply, and you know, like the page. You know, pay attention to the page. That's where we're going to be updating everyone on what's going on with the team all year. We're going to be updating that page on like the actual tournament and leading up to the tournament. Um, and then you, that that's the page that you'll be able to figure out how to you know support the Canadian team. You know, keep track of what we're doing, have some fun that way. We're going to be at a lot of events because we're actually going to take this pretty pretty seriously. It seems like, eh? Keep yeah, the whole goal. Out. Oh, sorry. The whole goal was basically a lot of people contact and they want to know how to get involved, how to get on the team. So um, a bunch of people sat down, um, created a list of like how like criteria that we wanted. So when you get your application form, you're going to want to put a lot of effort into it because that might that might get it's like an interview process for a job, right? That's going to get you a leg up against somebody else. If like 30 people apply, you're going to need some way to distinguish and stand out from the crowd. So we're encouraging people to put a lot of effort in. Uh, the other uh, goal is, is we took, I'm, I'm going to say flack, but there's a lot of, the whole point of what we're trying to do this year with the ETC team is trying to start getting it to be like its own entity that can evolve. And that way it's not just people having control of it and eventually it's going to be kind of an entity and that whatever's best for the country and best for the team is what gets, I guess, moved forward and not necessarily individuals' personal best interest. Uh, is that okay with you, Dan? I said that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's exactly what we're trying to go for. Is well, you know, we had to we had to start somewhere, so we had to start with the council, and that is entirely um, is that the is that the generosity of the captain. Um, the captain, if you guys don't know, has in like complete and utter control. Um, that is the only person the ETC uh, recognizes. So the fact that we have an opportunity to create a really democratic process to make a team is is actually pretty impressive. It's very it's very yeah. cool. Not something that necessarily every other country can do. Uh, so yeah, hopefully yeah, support us there, guys. Should be pretty cool, um, especially to keep updated with what's going on with the whole team. Um, yeah, like, share, subscribe. That's my thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll but, do videos or something. You, you do the thumb up likes. You can comment yeah. and. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, one thing that we forgot to mention is right now we're aggressively going after the 2017 team, but we're also in the works with starting 2018 recruiting now. Because starting right after the ETC to recruit for the year after seems a little bit crazy because you don't have nearly enough time. You have to have this, the team written in stone generally by December to, to you know get your plane tickets and stuff down. So we really want to start planning uh, two years out in advance. So if you can't do it 2017, but you're still interested, definitely apply and put that on the application form. Cool. So if you're only, if if you're only interested in 2018, you could still do the application on Thursday, whatever, on the first. Well, you might. I would. It, it it's for 2017. Right. But I would. 
this is I'm speaking on my ass maybe a little bit here. I would do it and then just put that you're only interested in 2018. That way it gets you on our radar. So when Dan goes to these big GTs and he knows like because we might not know you, um, but like it, it'd be good to have your name. And be like okay, let's watch how this guy plays. Let's see what armies he plays. You know if he's I'm just gonna I'm making fun of Jeff right now. If he's puking on the tables and like. Um, breaking people's models, like you know, we're gonna be watching that. So yeah, that was the best day. I'm so glad that I followed him until now. <laughs> I know. Hi, Jeff, if you're listening, he, he's, we he forgive is, you. He's in the chat. <laughs> is he? Yeah, good, good. That's why I mentioned it. I, I had a feeling he'd be in there. <laughs> yeah, but it's, that's a great, a great point, though, uh, which you, which you just said, because uh, Team USA had that problem this year, where four of the their selected player played almost demons exclusively. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the guy that qualified, so they had like this kind of issue about like, what did they want to do at the ETC? Yeah, well that's what we wanted to avoid because um, somebody, uh, I think it was Nate, Nate Nate and I was talking, Nate's given me some feedback uh, at Capital City in person, that was a while ago, but, and we were talking and he, he we were, we met, it came up that basically if we base it solely on performance at events, we're going to get eight Eldar players on our team. Yeah, they're, they're, and in yeah. the ETC format where you need eight different armies, that just doesn't work. Yep. So if you de if you play demons, like so that's the thing. If you play Eldar, you better be the best Eldar player around if you want to be on the team. Like, yep. Take the best stuff and you better be doing really well because that's going to be a really hard spot to get into. Same with Tau. I think Tau is going to be a really hard one as well because there's a lot yeah, of excellent Tau players. players. Yeah, for yep. sure. Yeah. So, and then sometimes, you know, it's just going to be a lot of uh, just, if people don't know you, it's going to be hard to get on, but, you know, you got the future, so well, I think that's enough on that. up the whole thing, right, is that if we can open up the process and then anyone can apply, then we can at least, you know, get to know you or, like, understand where you're coming from or any of that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, and the hope of this page, anyway, from my perspective, is that it'd be nice to get... Um, photos like so like round by round updates on Facebook so because the time difference people are going to be in at work and they want to know what's going on so yeah. they go to coffee break it'd be nice to have just a whole bunch of pictures of who's playing what and what armies and so we're, we're trying to even be more transparent just so that people can you know be proud of their team and proud of how because uh, the team was awesome this year so Dan um, played on the team and they did amazing and so it's a hard footsteps to follow but It'll yeah, we, we did like twice as good as we were expecting to do, and so we we were very happy about that. Um, so yeah, we have high hopes for the future. And shout outs to Clarence, the non-player coach, for keeping the rest of us up to date with what was going on. Yeah, yeah, that I, was really helpful. Clarence was a godsend. He was a great coach. Uh, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I don't know if we would have done as well without him. He was, he was really good. Yeah, that's two years in a row. So I'm just gonna point that out. Clarence is so dedicated to the team that two years in a row he went and didn't play. And coached. And flew from Korea. Yeah, from Korea. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So we're actually going to take a really quick uh, break, and then we'll be right back. We're going to talk about Fulmination and uh, Capital City Bloodbath. So stay tuned.
and we're back all right so we're gonna shake things up a little bit because we got some uh, some time but through the magic of editing nobody will know that we had a problem uh so we're gonna talk about capital city bloodbath yay everyone's not tired of hearing about that at all uh so briefly we're gonna go over the 40k event uh that was what i would dan and max both played in it and hope we both had a great time uh, if not now is when they can embarrass me publicly and i think we just lost dan but we'll try to get him back uh, anyway, have a good time. yeah, he definitely did not have fun. Uh, I had a good time. All right, so uh, 40k, a capital C bloodbath. Uh, we're talking about the singles in this case. We had 38 players, which is pretty good. So about a 20% improvement from last year, give or take. 15, 20%. Uh, so we were pretty happy with that. Um, faction spread in the top eight was fantastic. So I'm not going to talk about any actual players. But I want to say we actually had eight, like, unique armies in the top eight. Um, what do we have? We had... There was... I don't think... at least, like, oh, two the, the only The only yeah. thing there were two of was uh, was Tau. There were two Tau in the top eight, uh, and I think that was actually the only thing that was repeated, which is amazing. So I'm pretty happy about that. And there we yeah. go. Dan's back. He did have fun after all. What are you talking about? I was here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I told anybody this, but today, technology is my friend. There you go. It's It's been a rocky, rocky road getting this far. Um, it's just like, out, out in London, they're like 20 years behind the rest <laughs> yeah, of the country. Yeah, they don't quite have those new internets yet. <laughs> uh, yep. So, yep. the one... Like it right now. The one thing at uh, 40k for Bloodbath this year that we sort of went off the beaten path on was the missions. So, I wrote these up. You guys can give your feedback on them. Uh, they were well-intentioned, let me put it that way. Uh, but it, uh, it, we were, I was expecting, through all the scenarios I ran through in my mind, talking to a bunch of people, I was expecting really close scores on a lot of them. And uh, what surprised me was almost every round, every probably about 75% of the games were, were max points for one player and no points for the other, which was a little bit uh, disappointing. It's not what I was going for, but uh, if you want to check out the mission pack, it's over at capitalcitybloodbath.com. Uh, it's just under the event info, I think you can get the players pack. Uh, but past that, I'm going to turn it over to these two guys, and then we will talk about the overall results. So, Max, how about you start it off? Tell us about your experience at uh, Bloodbath, what army you brought, what your opponents were like, how your games were, and any other th thoughts you have on it. Uh, well, well, first of all, just to address your thing about the missions, uh, a lot of the missions were like turn-by-turn -turn objectives or turn-by-turn -turn something, and these missions, they, they will snowball pretty quickly, dude. so that's like... That will all, always make like a bunch of 30 zeros because if on turn 1 and 2 you just like destroy your opponent's army, at turn 3, 4, 5, 6 you're going to get like a gazillion points every single time. True enough. So, so th that was one thing. I, I'm not saying I hate it, I'm not saying I love it. It's just like uh, just the fact that it's what happens in turn by turn missions is that thing. Uh, I, played, uh, I played a good spread of players. I always play orcs. Like, uh, against orcs, you played both orc orcs players, players, didn't you? Yes, I did. I did <laughs> obviously, because there were two of the tournaments, so I had to play both of them. Naturally, like there you go. I draw orcs all the time. That's that's my thing. I go to a tournament, I play orcs. Play, yeah, okay. <laughs> Most people like, love that, though. You should be happy. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Oh yeah. It's, I've never read the the orc book, but now I know every single unit because I always play versus them. <laughs> so I, I know all the all the tricks and stuff. Uh, but yeah, these guys, these games were were really great, and it was not not the, the gimmicky orc stuff. Like there used to be the like the green tide. There used to be the the cheap stumpa. The the Casgo always uh, two uh, two up involved or yep. the, like the death death spot death death cup to something. Yeah, the death cup to star. Yeah, so none of that stuff. It was really and usually orc players are like that. They they just play like cool stuff and they just like shove them around and they're happy no matter what. Like my uh, the first my first round opponent was a uh, BJ who was running the uh, the auction thingy. Yep. And, uh, so he, he had the the shock attack gun, which is the literal best mall in the world. <laughs> he does uh, string the vortex in my army, and second turn he just teleports himself into close combat. It was like the best unit in the world. <laughs> um, when it works, it so works, I, right? So yeah, so uh, basically. My, uh, back, back to the back to the main thing, right? Let's focus. Stop talking about orcs. That's not nobody wants to know that. Um, <laughs> but game one, I played the uh, BJ with the orcs, and I, I destroyed him. And game two, I was unlucky because I played the Val Ethelfinger, yep. and Val's a 
number two, but uh, era number two and playing versus Tao was really, really hard. Army was like the the one matchup where playing anything but Tao was fun. It was like the two objectives are in the middle of the board, rather close. Like, it's it's two storm surge could contest both objectives at the same time. That would that like suck. Uh, uh, so I got a kind of submarine back to the top. Like, uh, I finished. Uh, third or second or third or fourth in battle points or yeah you were really pretty high, but I think you were third on battle and I, really? I didn't play it then or whoever came in second yeah you so, submarined really well <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah it, it does that and I was uh, also lucky I played the uh, Jason Sparks yep and uh, he, uh, I was lucky because um, one of my friends plays the exact same army that, that Jason played and uh, so I knew exactly the matchup, and I knew I could could not win if he played correctly. And uh, I was lucky because Jason was in his, his like fifth game with the LR, and uh, he did I, not play correctly. I like how you walked into that game too. It's like you you sat down across from Jason. You said, "Man, no pressure, but if you play this right, I can't win." And uh, oh yeah, yeah. and how how did, like, how did that game go, Max? <laughs> I won <three>, <laughs> But I swear I've played this the exact my my buddy Eric he plays like the same same list like exactly the same thing everything except he plays two Ornaths instead of the War Hunter right yeah and I I've, I've played at least ten games and I I I never scored a single fucking point in any of those games <laughs> like it I've tried every single like let's play this time I go first I choose whatever and then I do I don't know like super aggro or defensive or whatever I played, played every single game single way and it's not possible to to win so uh, i was i was really lucky that that one game i was really lucky and he was really tired too like uh, probably was playing the doubles earlier or he he went to drink and he was like it was the fourth game of the first day yeah so he was really tired i don't get tired so that's that's kind of my thing yeah J jason jason's actually one of the tournament staff um he, he he paid and played in the tournament like that was his thing he doesn't help to uh but yeah he he was at the venue i think until like 11 30 on thursday night uh he was there all day friday and then came in early saturday so yeah i, I figured because he was really uh like he knew he knew he made a mistake like at the end of the game the first thing he said is i shouldn't have done this i'm like no no you should not like you know <laughs> yeah and yeah, him and i him and i talked about that a lot and he was basically he had never played against demons before so he was yeah. basically having one of those moments where he's like, if I could replay him, I could win. If I could redo this, and he went no, back yeah, and forth I on it. I told him too. I don't. I don't want to rematch him. I'm like ever. He's gonna beat me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna win that. I don't want. I don't want to. If Sparks asked for a rematch. Uh, nope. No. No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I would never <laughs> <either>. One zero. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I mean, what am I gonna do? Right? So, uh, and uh, yeah, that was it. Um, the my. The worst part of the worst part of my tournament was I played one of my buddy like that was uh, driving with me. Uh, PL, he played Necrons. You had the, one of the best painted armies. Yep. Or, um, and uh, it was the most boring mission in the world. And I played him, and I, I, was, I was like, I dick move him. I I, I spawned at least one thousand five hundred points of demons that game. I killed six Necrons. I scored thirty points. It was. <laughs> I looked at the game. I, I knew like there was no kill point. It was like turn by turn, scoring objectives. I had like the corruption thing going. I was like, okay, it's it's gonna be boring. I'm not gonna kill anything. I just spawn units all day. I, I swear he must have killed like eighteen. Points. Yeah, he he, ta he tabled you, and you still had an army on the table. <laughs> oh, and like I, I killed six units, uh, six total necrons, and one of them was a mishap from uh, from a destroyer. <laughs> Oh man! So but overall, I had a really great time. The tables were like the most insane thing. I've never seen a tournament with that many awesome tables. Like they were like consistent. That's one thing that you don't really see. Usually, Turin is like, except Nova, which like Turin is not really pretty, but it's really consistent. Like they have great terrain, like for game, game, uh, whatever. Like the terrain is uh, useful or but, it's, yeah, it's it's functional, right? Functional. Yeah. Yeah, functional. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, terrain is like really functional. It's not like the best looking terrain ever, but it's it's really like all the tables have the same two sets of terrain. It's really cool. But uh, you guys, yeah, all the fat mats everywhere, and uh, all the terrain was really nice. There was no, or at least I didn't play on the table. It was like, ugh, this table is 
Like when one year at the boys I played on the table with eight <laughs> Bastion. I was on the table was eight. I remember our game at Du Bois. You with your your Nurgle army and there was no terrain at all. It was just an open the, table. No man's land at all. Oh, <laughs> that was the worst. I had a shit yeah. Nurgle list. He played like a Tau gun line. The terrain was like you have two pieces on each side of the board, nothing in the middle. Like, yep, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah. we, we got yeah, some good boys. terrain going. <laughs> oh, oh I yeah. One of those. I played on a desert board against like uh, uh, Tony Kopak, and I was like, great, my warp spiders can't even hide. It's so awful. Yeah, jumping away is fun when you can. <laughs> when you can't hide, yeah, he just shoots you in the face and you're dead. <laughs> so I guess we'll uh, we'll hand it over to Dan. Uh, what were you playing? Uh, I played my ETC War Convocation list on the singles day. Yeah, I'm gonna call you out. You made me paint some Eldar for you. I did. I did. I asked, and you were a kind, kind person to do so. And then I played Eldar in the doubles. I was like, "Fuck this shit." <laughs> Could not handle it. I was just like, "This is not." This is not okay. There's no way that I should have this many strength six shots. This just shouldn't be allowed. This... So I couldn't this do it. AIDS. This, it's AIDS. That's for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you, AIDS. It will, it will infect you if you play Eldar for yeah, too it's, long. It's the worst yeah. thing. It's the yeah, worst thing I, in the world. I was, I was, I just, so I, I got a little, and I also played against Eldar, and I just, I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do the Eldar thing. So I played, yeah, so I played my ETC War Convocation. Um, uh, it was awesome. It was really fun. It was a, it was a cool, Army, it's definitely a slightly different build or different take on the War Convocation um, than, I guess, the usual meta goes. Do, but, do you uh, want to get into that? Because, so the War Con, the basics of it's the same for every army. You get the one knight and all the other stuff, but then there's that little, was it 400 points of extra? Do you want to go through what, what made your army different? Yeah, sure, sure. So the the big difference with mine is, I, A, I took 10 Vanguard rather than the minimum 5. Uh, yep. I took uh, a Bunker with an Escape Hatch because that's automatic. And then an ammo dump because I had 20 points. And then I took uh, a Caluxus, which is just the best. And then, um, what was the last thing I took? Oh, yeah, I took Inquisitor, my Inquisitor of Grenades. Uh, he had Servo Skulls, he had Rag Grenades, and he had Psychotro Grenades. Um, so he just threw grenades at people all day and uh, poisoned them with radiation. So the big the trick with that thing is so the, the Inquisitor goes with the Vanguard, right? And then anybody who gets into combat with the, the Vanguard is then negative two toughness, um, which is pretty pretty bad for just about any unit in combat. Yeah, because yep. so, and you can yeah. those are the ones you can buff up to strength eight pretty easily, right? Yeah, they well yeah. that's the thing with war combat. So you're instant right? deathing like, everything. I I played somebody at ETC. I, I was in combat with like I think it was twenty two scarabs, charged it in. Got the like that unit negative two tough, so the scarabs are tough one. And then I did like fifty seven strength four automatic hits, initiative ten. Yeah, yep. And he just took them all off. <laughs> I, went, I went combat by like seventy. <laughs> like, There's no way this is possible. But yeah, so that was pretty awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So uh, who I actually played? So first round. Uh, so oh yeah, so going into this, War Complication has a lot of good matchups, but they have two particularly bad ones, and it's usually Tau and Eldar. Those two are pretty scary for the War Convocation. I mean, those two armies are fantastic in general, but those two armies also kind of eat through a lot of the strength that the War Convocation has. Yeah. So mm -hmm. first round, thanks, Logan. I got... <laughs> uh, I actually played against Denis. Yeah. Uh, Denis Batiste? Yeah, Denis Batiste, yeah. But... Is it? Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, that was the uh, best part of the whole tournament, <laughs> was that Dan Platt played Denis Platis, or Platis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely a good battle, but uh, yeah, so it was a good game. Um, lucky, I, lo I feel lucky in the the fact that he was only playing his like fourth game with the list, um, because if he had not like if his list should have like should have done some serious damage. Um, yeah. I got lucky and I killed his uh, marker lights on the first turn, so no D missiles for him, and then I just slogged through. Yeah, I, he actually charged my Vanguard unit with his storm surges. And I warned him. I told him, I was like, man, you're going to go down negative two toughness. Like, you know that, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, they'll be dead. Don't worry. I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> he charged me. We were all wondering and what happened there. He was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he charged he me. He should have so done, done better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went up plus three strength and I charged my two uh, Doom Crawlers in. And they just did like eight and it, uh, instant death attacks at AP2. Yep. Yeah. And that killed the Storm Surges. So. Yeah. That's so brutal. 
Oh, it was crazy. It was like it was it was a crazy game. It was a good game, but uh, very is very close until like until that happened, and then I just jumped ahead on the double kill points yeah. and uh, won that one. Uh, next round, who did I play the next round? You played like you, you played Ricky what? at some point. You played Wait, Ricky uh, round four. You played Yoshi. Yeah. Oh, I played Caleb. That's it. Caleb. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Caleb, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, so I played against Caleb with 51 Warp Spiders. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I appreciate that. You guys did, did, that was really Chris's good. army, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, so Caleb borrowed my Warp Spiders, and then he gave me five more Warp Spiders as a thank you for letting him <laughs> use them. Yeah. Uh, more Warp Spiders than any one person ever needs, for yeah. sure. Anyway, played 51 Warp Spiders. Um got into combat. Now, I don't think I shot even like one time. I just, I just like, I'm going to walk up to you and I'm going to punch the spiders in the face. And so I won that one. And then round three was Nate Stevens. Uh, that was actually the double relic round. And that was the only matchup of the whole tournament that I was like, okay, this is actually a good matchup for me. Uh, me and Nate had played that game a couple times and uh, my army just does pretty well, even against flyers. Um, so that was pretty good for me. Double relic. Meant I well, grab so just and, yep. So it does well against flyers because you can twin link for two turns, right? Yeah, I is that the big thing? Army twice. Yeah. Not to so mention it's... I have the I, I took the two Icarus arrays on mm. my Doom crawlers. Yeah. So they they should kill a tyrant a turn. Oh yeah. So that that was pretty that was pretty good, but um, yeah. So I ended up winning that one. Actually, I grabbed a relic and put it in the bunker. It's like no, this is my relic. <laughs> this is <laughs> here. <laughs> Um, and then round four, I played Ricky. Um, another double kill point game, which is brutal. Um, but I ended up winning by... I didn't win that one with 30. I got that one 23 points, I think, because yeah. all their jet bikes are just the dumbest things. It's like, oh, look, last turn? You don't have any objectives. Damn it. <laughs> um, so I had to win by kill points on that one. We tied on the objectives and then got... Uh, I won by seven points or something, so... Uh, fifth round, this is the next day, I played against Fred from Barry, um, Tau Eldar, so really happy about that. You know, the night yeah. of, I'm just like, okay, I'm playing against Tau Eldar. That's probably one of the worst things I could play against. Uh, but same thing, I, I had to capitalize on every possible mistake, killed all the Mark Lights on turn one again, because again, it just, it just had to, I had to go for it. I'd put everything into it, but um, I did get them. And as Commander ran off the board. And then he shot the next turn and then killed, like, two things. Like, just dice were with me and they were not with him. Um, so I got that one. And then last round, I actually played Wesley Pauly, who the, we we thank, or we congratulated earlier in the video. Um, really smart player. Really good game. Um, he It came down to him moving to within... from Instead of 18 inches, he moved within 15 inches of my Calexus, and that was literally what decided the game. Mm. So him moving one model three inches decided the game for me. It was that oh, tight. That, that it was, was just like one model sticking off the edge of his blob that moved too far? Yeah. Oh. You know, he just, he, he, I hopped him out just a little bit too far. I was like, Calexus, go turn them off. Boop! Ran back to the corner, and killed stuff. Oh, that's yeah. rough. Because he, run, he runs, I don't know if we mentioned this, he runs the Astro Militarum uh, blob squad, right? So he had like, just this huge unit just full of psychers. Yeah. And that's just so brutal that like one model, bang, you lose all your buffs and then you die. Yeah. No, I mean, he was trying to do that because he, 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 it was a mark for death scenario. So you pick an enemy unit and you have to kill that one to get 10 points, uh, which is a substantial game mechanic in that mission. Um, and he marked my Calexus. So he had to get my Calexus out and, like, had to bait him out. So I understood, like, what his goal was, but I don't know if he realized... Because I, I had also half my army in reserve. So I don't think he really might have caught on to the level of shooting I was about to shoot at him. Um, and so I killed a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just just killed a lot of stuff and he died, man. So. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what happened. I <laughs> just shot, rolled I dice shot, and I won the game. <laughs> I, I did. I shot my infiltrators at his uh, command squad in a bunker with stealth ruins and a librarian attached. Like, just, just the infiltrators killed them all. Wow. Right like on. That, that should never happen. Like, that's... never, ever happen. But it did, so. <laughs> that well, that's the luck of the plot. <laughs> it was good. It was it was good for me, that's for sure. So, excellent. Yeah. So yeah, it was capable but but awesome tournament. Great great event. Uh, lots of people. Lots of like Max said, train was awesome. Like across every single board, uh, there was like consistent quality terrain. 
Um, and that was fantastic. I did play on the same table like four times. That table was great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> We're gonna fix that. Yeah, yeah so we're that, gonna fix that. We're gonna year. be doing random tables next year because yeah. it was unfortunate. So you played the same table four times in a row, and unfortunately, the guy who finished the the tournament with zero battle points also played on the same table five games in a row. Oh really? Uh, and oh, I, really? I hadn't I hadn't really caught on that that was happening until the start of day two after I did pairings. Uh, so yeah, apologies. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but that I mean, I again. can't really complain. It was an awesome table. I just got really used to it. I was like, okay, that's a nook and cranny. Okay, good, go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. There you go. Yeah. So uh, let's go to awards because that's what people care about. So yeah. uh, Max, what kind of what? I know you kind of said one of them, but what awards did you win? Because I know you. Oh, won I won. Um, or I won. won second best painted at the painting competition because you had a painting competition, and uh, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that I looked at the picture online. I don't even know who finished first. Um, which it was War put, Machine? A yeah, War it was Machine, a War machine model. model, actually. Oh yeah. Okay. Then, then I don't know who finished. Okay. Titan that's cool. or something. Can't yeah, remember what it was. It's, it's a big like. Rhinoceros or something. Yep. It, it, it was cool. It was a cool one. Uh, and then I won uh, Best General. Because yeah. because, because Matt. Man, uh, no. I was, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was favorites. pretty happy. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was expecting uh, Best Demon, actually, because we were like two or three fully demons, and I uh, figured I, I ended up pretty pretty high, but yeah, gave no. me a your your no. submarine worked out well, man. You uh, So you finished with 127 battle points out of 180. So yeah, you took took awesome. one big hit and a little bit on another game, and that was it, and did really well otherwise. Yeah, I had two uh, two twenty points win, so I, I, that's why I thought it would knock me out of like overall or general con- contemption, but it didn't. So yeah, yeah. You well, were, we yeah you we give like three just, best man. overalls right for that yeah, tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that well, that, that, that know, helps a lot with the, the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Dan won. Everything right? Oh yeah, I got best overall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like like it's yeah. nothing. He's just so used to it. Now. It's like oh, yeah, I got best <laughs> no, overall. No, it's fine. It's awesome. I had a great time. <laughs> is that two years was... in a row? <clears throat> that is. Yeah, that is yep. two years in a row actually. Um, this year the plaque was smaller, so you guys can all be disappointed in the, the tournament organizers. They're like, we're gonna cheap out on this little plaque. <laughs> actually, yeah. that was, that's your own fault. Is it? Because you complain was, I think you could you you made the comment that the big plaque didn't fit on your shelf. <laughs> wow. No, I said I said wow. I trophies, not plaques. That's what I said. But oh, okay. wow. anyway, I'm happy to have gone to the tournament. I had a great time. The organizer was fantastic. Um, I played six incredibly hard games. Um, every single game was like I, I was going into it expecting to lose, but won. Um, so I it was it was intense. It was a very intense tournament. I think almost every single top player in Canada was there that I know personally. Um, and it was, all two yeah, of it was them. really good. All yeah. two of them. What? No. All no, two. I mean, I didn't play. <laughs> I was playing in this event. Jeez. Yeah, so all the top Chris players playing. were playing in the event. Oh. <laughs> That's so true. So, so true. What, what we'll do here, just to quickly go through this, uh, is we'll talk about the rest of the awards that went out, and we'll just do a quick, uh, quick chat about the top eight lists. Let's go through them super fast, because I know people are interested in this. Uh, so... For total prizes, we had first overall, of course, went to Dan. Second overall went to uh, Ricky Johnson with his Eldar. Third overall went to Diogo Pita. Anybody in competitive 40k sadly knows who he is. Uh, top general <laughs> hey, went I to Max. I don't punch that guy. Everybody <laughs> at Nova is allowed to punch Diogo. Yeah, yes, you can. entirely sanctioned by the Canadian ETC team. If he says no, he's not on the team. Oh, yeah. there you go. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we did best in race, but we decided to split... Or not best in race, like best in Imperium, heretical, blah, blah, blah. But we, we decided... Yeah, sort of in faction. We decided to break off uh, Adeptus Astartes and Eldar, because otherwise it would basically be best Adeptus Astartes and best Eldar. Uh, so top Adeptus Astartes went to Jamie McQuay from Loaded Dice, which is Dan's club. Yep. <clears throat> Kicked ass without a painted army, so that was, yep. uh, that was Yeah, awesome. he did well. Uh, top Eldar went to Jason Sparks, who Max uh, was talking about before. Top Heretical went to Ken Hammer's own Nick Blackburn. Uh, top Imperial went to Wes Polly. And Top Xenos went to Denis Potis, who Dan talked about. Uh, hobby scores, first was Nate Stevens. Second was Pierre Luc, uh, who Max spoke about. And third was Tyler Walker from, I think, Greater Windsor Table Warriors, I think it's his club. Yeah, I think it's in Windsor, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Player's Choice for painting. So this was, we put the best, top the top eight uh, armies out based on our paint rubric and had players vote on what their favorite was. Uh, the player's favorite this year was Pierre Luke and his blue blue Necrons. Uh, best Sport went to BJ Lemure. 
Second worst dice went to Eric Slowinski from Basement Collective. And worst general, and again, I apologize, John, for having you play on the same table for five games, uh, was John McNeil. He was, uh, John McNeil doesn't, doesn't count. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he was, he, was, he was nice about it. Oh, he's uh, the most friendliest guy in the world, yeah. So let's talk about lists real quick. So these are in no particular order. Uh, but so we had, uh, first off, we had Diogo. He ran his Bark Star. Uh, that was a CAD with a Chaplain, with a uh, Power Fist, Sam AL, two units of Scouts, a Fire Raptor, uh, Asriel, and then a Lib Conclave with Tigurius and three Librarians on Bikes, and then uh, 30, 45, 56 Fenrisian Wolves in the Wolfkin Detachment. Stupidest so, army ever. Yep, that's that. Uh, that's a soul killer right there. Yeah. There's, there's 45 War Spiders, and then there's the Bark Star. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. It's it, you can is you can it, deal with it. it. Really? The is thing it? <laughs> the thing is, so a lot of other a lot of other big Death Stars, you know, you can break off like the uh, the, the Thunderstar. Uh, you can split up if you need to, right? Iron Priests are durable enough. You can sort of run them off on their own late game. This thing, you're sort of stuck as one big unit, so you can deny everything on the table. But it's tough to to really rack up points in certain mission types. Um, but I agree with that. Yeah, I I, I say really I say like that. The but yeah. Like, to me, this is a weakness because of the Fire Raptor. Like, if you play, like, Dark Angel Tactical Squad and Rhinos instead of, like, Scouts, yeah. it costs more, but you get four obsec units that, that can move around the board and get you some, some good points. And Fire Raptor, like, in our game, he came in clutch for, like, random reasons, not even, like, good ones. But that's not, like, good in that list. Like, it's... it's it's not what the list needs. The list needs like objective things. Yeah, like, it needs some. You're objectives. even playing Azrael, so you can play like bikes as troops. It's like it's completely insane. Like you can have bikes for troopers to move around. Like there, there's a lot more stuff that you can include instead of the fire raptor. Like you don't need more firepower because you just have one insane unit. Yes, yeah, so I, I think that fire that fire raptor was there because this, he had a bunch of quad mortars on order that didn't arrive in time. Uh, but I, I agree. More uh, more troops, especially obsec troops, mobile ones, would be really big for that list. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on, on the on the list. Excellent. All right. Uh, next up, we got Jamie McClay's list. He was running the Lions Blade Strike Force, uh, double demi company with uh, attack marines, melta guns, and razorbacks with heavy bolters. Uh, gra- uh, Devastator, two Devastator units, uh, each with one grav cannon. Uh, two assault marine units in drop pods with a flamer. Uh, company master with a power fist, chaplain with a power fist, tenth company support with five scouts, and then an oath sworn detachment with a knight paladin and a knight warden. So one thing that uh, a couple of people asked me about is how how are you running double demi company and still fitting in two knights? Uh, and we're, what what it boils down to is he cheaped out on the grab, which is huge, uh, but also. For the tenth company support, it's only one unit of scouts that you need instead of the uh, what is it three or four you need for the uh, uh, three yeah three yeah. for the space marine one so that's a three hundred points there so you get to play around a lot with this one so I think uh, I think we're gonna start to see more people running lines blade and I, I know Chris and I talked about this on the show before you know we couldn't really figure out why this was considered such an underdog compared to uh, battle company because it's got all the same tools all you lose is chapter tactics but you know it's not not all that big in consideration of everything else you get. Lo- losing Devastator Doctrine is kind of nasty, but being able to Overwatch at full ballistic skill is pretty fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty solid. The big thing, the big difference is definitely the fact that you can't have Con for Scout, right? That's, that's true. That's the major difference as far as that goes. All the, like, but me and him, like, we wrote that list, and it was, it, like, it was... It was an incredible list. It's actually a really surprisingly good list because you have the double knight, which is you have to deal with. Yep. And then the whole time, the battle company is just like, oh, objectives. These are cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just rack up the points. So you have the firepower to kill the rhinos or you have the firepower to kill the knights. You don't usually have enough to do both. Unless you're Eldar. Unless you're Eldar. Yeah. But even then, you know, even then, they're, they're, it's still going to be a tough fight. I um, agree. I agree. I like it a lot. Yeah. No, he actually, he actually, the first time we played that list, uh, he beat my War Convocation. Oh, so, he yeah. beat the Danimal. Oh. He's, he, is, he is my most common opponent. I played him probably more than I've played any tournament games. Like, I played him uh, at least 200 times. Um, so we play all the freaking time. But that list is, uh, I thought, I was really impressed, actually. The Double Knight plus Battle Company, that's actually quite crazy. Yeah, there you go. 
Sounds good. All right. Hey, uh, Logan, I hate to cut you off. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to, to leave it. So. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Max. Thanks for dropping yeah, in. I, I understand really you're a busy guy. For having me, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, right now, I, I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> no, but I will uh, gladly, uh, gladly jo join back in uh, so some other time. Just uh, right now, I got to leave. It was a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. We'll so have you back. Do I just like hang out Skype, or am I going to break the whole thing? Uh, That's you, fine. You can, you can drop. All right. <laughs> Cool. So I, I feel like how we did that very like very slowly, very like oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to fix some cameras here, but while we're doing that, uh, next up we actually we're going to talk about Max's list. So this was pretty crazy. This was yeah, because he didn't talk about it. I was trying to like yeah. interrupt him, be like, man, mention your list, mention your list, but he wouldn't. So Max's list was I think is eight exalted or nine exalted flamers, eleven pink horrors. A level 3 Herald on a disc with Exalted Locust, Conjuration, Paradox, Fate Weaver, and 5 Furies as the warp, as the um, Demonic Incursion. And then a combined arms detachment that has 3 Heralds of Zinch all on disc. One with Grimoire, one with Endless Grimoire, one with Impossible Robe. A unit of 16 Horrors, a unit of 11 Horrors, and a unit of 6 Screamers. So this thing is just like summoning crazy. And that, yep. that is what he did. <laughs> and it worked very well for him. So, uh, Dan, did you end up playing against him? I did not. No, I didn't get a chance to see it in action. Uh, so, I know, uh, as you said, he did pretty well. Only, I think he only lost one game and then had two 20-point wins. So, he uh, did, did pretty well, all things considered. Uh, so, shout-outs to Max. And, again, he's, uh, we'll have him on again at some point. Uh, yeah, that exalted flamer unit is actually pretty crazy. Yeah, so this it's, it's is something that that's sort of been been evading me. So what for for anybody who doesn't know exactly how that unit works, what's what's the hotness on it? Uh, well, it's 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 definitely deceptive. It doesn't really make sense at first, but the big thing is they can either a get D three strength ten AP one shots each. And there's eight of them. Eighteen inch range. Much. Yeah, 18 inch range, and then it, but it's heavy, so when they deep strike in, they can't shoot, that kind of stuff. Or they can get a strength six AP three flamer, torrent flamer each. Yeah. So you can't charge it, like you just you just can't. You won't charge it with anything with anything smart, I guess. Even with two plus armor, it's still gonna do a lot of damage to you. Um, and then it just drops down. And they have they have three wounds each. They have you know five plus three only ones, or you can grimoire and go three plus three only ones. Uh, there's a lot of wounds in that unit. For sure, it's a it's a pretty pretty beefy unit, all things considered. Yeah, yeah, you got the three heralds, and even uh, I ran the numbers on it because uh, that's one of the builds that I'm working on at the moment. And and uh, with D three shots and the uh, nine guys, if you were to pre science it, you're basically gonna be messing up a tank or a knight pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that the course you take before you go into science at college? Yep, you take pre-science. Yeah. I love, I love. Pre Everybody knows that. That's like my favorite word. <laughs> but like, no, it, it works out great because you're like, okay, well, that's 18 shots on average, hitting on sixes. But if you, you know, twin link them, you hit. It's like oh, you're gonna geez. get five or six strength three and ten hits on you, and you're done, right? Yeah. Then the guy, uh, you reroll the Overwatch as well. So depending on if it's a Night Titan, you could like do a couple hall points. He comes in, you could do a couple more. Oh yeah, anything yeah. that charges that unit, especially if it has prescience, just gets destroyed. Yeah, yeah. like that's nine nine D three strength six AP three flamer hits or nine D three las cannon shots or strength ten las cannon shots. It's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so the next list. Moving on, we've got Denis Platis with his Tau. So he had a commander with drone controller and a marker drone. Two naked crisis suits, four marker drones, four pathfinders. That was the one thing I couldn't figure on this list. Four pathfinders, two storm surges with the usual kit, uh, void shield generator with three void shields, and then a riptide wing, uh, all with burst cannon, I believe, all with interceptor, and two with stim injector. So void shield with this list is pretty great. There's definitely the points for it, uh, especially if you skimp out on the feel no pain on the riptides. Uh, the, the only things I saw on this list that kind of threw me for a loop was uh, taking taking Pathfinders at all. They're usually just sort of giving away a kill point. Uh, but also not running Iridium Armor on the Commander. That's something you don't see too often. So it leaves them with a 3 plus save at T4 instead of a 2 plus save at Toughness 5, which can be really, really big sometimes. 
But otherwise, I mean, Denis made it work. He did really, really well. Uh, we were not using the draft FAQ, so Void Shield was still the crazy version of it, which is probably a big okay. part of it. Yeah, some some may say. I don't but, think so. Uh, yeah. No, Denis did, did really well. He finished uh, fifth on battle points with 118, so he was in the top eight for sure. Uh, next up, we got another Tau player. So this is Joe Medima. Uh, he's running Don's Blade Contingent. Uh, so I think that's Val, by the way. Uh, no, Val was running the double surge list. Val was ninth. He was one spot away from it in top eight. So right, Joe, Joe, Joe Joe submarined his way through this. Um, so he was running. Nothing retail, wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong There's with nothing it. Nothing wrong with submarine. Uh, so yeah. re- retail cadre didn't cause any wars or anything. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so the one the one thing I will preface this: we did find after the event there was a problem with this list. Um, I don't think it played into the outcome of any of the games. Uh, but just to make that public, we did find a problem with it. Uh, so his commander has, and you'll understand it pretty quickly, has iridium armor, plasma rifle, neural web system jammer, fusion blades, vectored retro thrusters, stim injector, and shield generator. Uh, so the problem is there, it's actually too, too many pieces of equipment, and the fusion blades actually require him to have a fusion blaster as well, so it actually works up to three too many things. Um, so anyway, I had to chat with Joe. I don't think it played too much into anything that happened in the games, uh, but just to, to make that publicly known. Um, he had three crisis suits with plasma rifles, two with fusion, two with flamers, a uh, single broadside with smart missiles and high-yield missile pods, single riptide with burst cannon, plasma, and skyfire, drone net, optimized stealth cadre with a single ghost keel and cyclic ion raker, and then a riptide wing with two burst, one ion, uh, two with Interceptor, two with Feel No Pain, two with SMS, one with a Plasma Rifle. So it's sort of a, a mismatched list, but I mean, props to Joe. He did he did surprisingly well, all things considered, with uh, with a list that I th- personally I think could use some some optimization on it. But uh, you know, props to him for making it work. Four yeah, Riptides is is never never a laughing matter. <laughs> no, I don't, I think that's it. There's definitely two books that are above the rest, right? So yeah. I, I should have said that. That sounds mean, but What's all right. Next? next up, we got Ricky Johnson with his Eldar. So Ricky was oh. running something pretty funny. Uh, so Farseer, Skyrunner, uh, four units of three Scat bikes, a Crimson Hunter, two units of three Vols Wrath D batteries, uh, three War Walkers, just naked War Walkers, Wraith Knight with Wraith cannons, uh, Aspect Host with five Fire Dragons and a Wave Serpent, and two units of five Warp Spiders with Exarchs. Oh, his uh, his war walkers actually had bright lances and star. star ah, cannons. did the interesting? They, they, no, they scatter lasers and star cannons. Yeah, yeah. Because they were the old ones where you'd shoot the scatter lasers first, then twin link the star cannons, then you'd kill the marines, right? Yeah. There you now go. this is an off metal list, very off metal list for sure for Eldar, but don't let it deceive you. Like this is a this is a list that's got some power. It's got some it's got some serious strength in it, and with a good player like Ricky behind it, it I can definitely understand why he got second. Yeah. yeah, and like the, the Warwalkers aren't bad, man. They come, no, they no, can no, flank. No. They come in. They like that's a lot of firepower. He can deal with the AP two. Like that, that unit might even come in and cripple a uh, Riptide. Like no problem. Yeah, yeah, not even not even difficult for sure. So and then, like not, I actually love the battle focus on them. Yeah, the, like, the Walkers can battle focus is actually really good. It's pretty funny. Yep, really good. Uh, so fun, fun fun fact about Ricky, he played his first game 100 points down because he actually had to make his list the morning of on Battlescribe on my laptop uh, <laughs> and kept like kept adding up the numbers in his head during his first game. He's like, no, there's no way I have 1850 points. I must have like 2,000. So he played with uh, down two, two of his D batteries and still still got 30 points. <laughs> so good for him. Uh, Dan, we well, talked... He's, he's, like, he's arguably one of the better players. Yeah, Ricky's a very good player. Yeah. Uh, Dan, we talked about your list already, so we'll skip over that. And then last but not least, fine. We, fine. You had your spot I, in the sunlight, man. <laughs> Dan wants to get burned. <laughs> yeah, tell me what's wrong with my list, Logan. Tell me what's wrong. I couldn't tell you what's wrong with your list, man. The frontline guys couldn't tell you what was wrong with your list. They had it on signals this week and they couldn't say anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, that's cool. Uh, and then last but not least, we got West Poly. So this list is going to sound a lot less scary than it actually is. It's uh, an Astro Military CAD, two Minostorm Priests. Company Command Squad with Creed and four Vets. Uh, infantry Platoon with four Las Cannon teams. Uh, veterans with three Plasma Guns. Grimnar's War Council with Ulrich, uh, Njal, Stormcaller, an Iron Priest, four Cyberwolves on a Thunderwolf. 
Rune Priest with a bike, Melta Bombs, Mash Level 2, and a Rune Axe. And then a fully decked out Lib Conclave with Tigurius and four Librarians, all Mastery Level 2, uh, three with four staves, three with bikes, and one with Melta Bombs. So you see this list, you look at it on the table, and you're like, that's a lot of really weak models. Your Iron Priest is the only thing that can kill anything, and maybe you've got a couple Las Cannons. And then he seizes against you on a 3+. plus. Or he rerolls yep. his Warlord trade to get it on a 2+. Plus. And he gets two Warlord trades, right? Gets, Creed? Oh, that's right. Two Warlord trades. Two Warlord trades. Uh, so, really, really good chance of getting Strategic Genius. And it's it's just crazy. He gets uh, 25 different rolls or something for Psychic Powers. Uh, and I will say this. Uh, props to Wes for making horrible, horrible abuse of a really weird rule in ITC. Uh, normally, if you use the Telekinesis Levitation Power or use Gate of Infinity, you cannot use it in combat. In fact, I think the rules specifically say you can't. Um, ITC lets you, though, which is really oh. crazy. So this blob doesn't even need hit to run. Really it can just levitate or gate out of combat. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he goes for the rolls. Usually, I mean, I, I've, I've played against him once. And uh, just from what I've seen in these games, you know, he'll go for uh, for getting the divination powers he needs to get, to get the unit super durable, start rolling on bio, get endurance on there, uh, and then just grab whatever he needs. You know, do you need uh, null zone to deal with something that's got really high invulnerable saves? Great, we'll roll that out. We've got a million rolls on it. Do we need veil? You know, great, we can get that. Do we need telekinesis powers? You know, for the one good roll on it. <laughs> He's got the tools he needs, so... Don't uh, don't don't let the the weird list fool you. It is incredibly strong. Yeah, <laughs> it's a super psychic buff for sure. It's yep. got all its power comes from the like the heavy amount of psychic powers it has. Not to mention the orders from Creed actually, the tank hunter, the ignores cover, all that kind of stuff. He doesn't need powers for that. He can just order. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of really twin, solid twin linked ignores cover last cannons. Yep. All right, and that is it for the top eight lists there. So. Uh, guys, any closing thoughts on Bloodbath this year? No, I think uh, we covered I, I, it all. Yeah, I had a great time. Um, I, I got uh, a few guys to come up from London to do it. It's it's a trek to Ottawa, for sure, but I will tell anybody that wants to go that it is a great time. Really good time. We had like, somebody come up from Windsor. We had Wes out from freaking Edmonton, like a, yep. like a freaking champ, man. That was ridiculous. Um, yeah, shows up at 5 a.m.? Yeah, yeah. Me and Ricky flew in from uh, Europe for it. Um, it was an awesome, awesome event. I'm pretty much guaranteed going next year. Good well, to for the third time, right? Third, third win. Patrick, what do I get for that? A slightly so smaller gonna... plaque. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna shrink them next year to be just a dog. Just, just for best overall, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. We'll call it the, the Dan Platt Award of Excellence. <laughs> So we're going to move on. We're going to do a low review. We're going to go through Fulmination really quickly. Do you guys both have that up and ready to go? Sure do. Yep. So then take us through the Primaris there, uh, Logan. All right. So our Primaris on Fulmination is Electro Surge. Warp Charge 1, 18-inch range, Strength 5, AP 4, Assault 6, Witch Fire. Okay. It's not terrible. Not it's not great. terrible. It, it's, it's, not, it's not Shriek. So there... Yeah. This yeah. just just as a preface, th this is another one of those ones that's probably going to continue on the whole theme of of Admiral Akbar saying it's a trap. So, uh, Dan, you want to take us into number one here? Sure. It's uh, Electro Shield. Uh, it's a blessing that targets the Psyker. While its powers affect the Psyker, has a three plus invulnerable save. So not too bad. So, yeah, not terrible, especially in a Death Star that is going to grab Sanctuary anyway. Or if you're getting Veil of Time and you're you're scared of war hunters dropping D templates on your face. Yep. Oh, yeah. um, definitely not a bad power to have. Absolutely. Okay. Next one. Oh, Electro. Cool. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Electro oh, saying... Pulse. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. All right. I was just going to say it's not one to. It's not a reason to roll on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Electro Pulse. <laughs> I got really excited because I. It's like I got the worst power to read, but. <laughs> A nine inch range, it's a Nova Power, Strength One, Assault One, Haywire. For all it's those okay. times. It works it really kind of cool against a battle company. Yeah, it would work pretty well against Battle Company. It would work really well against that uh, ten Lehman Russ army that was in doubles at uh <laughs> Blood Path. <laughs> that was awesome to see, by the way. Shout out to you guys for running that. Uh all right. Any other thoughts on that one, or is it another one of the meh? Alright. 
Light, yeah. Lightning Arc. So this is one that apparently is making uh, a, a recurrence in the Chaos book. Uh, just exactly the same power under a different name. Uh, so Warp Charge 2, Witchfire, 18-inch range, Strength 5, AP 4, Assault D6 with Lethal Discharge. And Lethal Discharge <laughs> is... <laughs> Lude. After this attack has been resolved against the target, Legal discharge. roll a dice for every other enemy unit within six inches of the target. On a four plus, that unit takes D6, Strength Five, AP Four, randomly allocated hits. So, not bad. A bit of a tough sell for a warp charge two, though. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Be good against warp charge two makes it expensive. For yeah, sure. we'd be good against a lot of like horde armies, but again. This is like one of those super situational ones. If it was a Norse cover, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be a, yeah, it'd be a lot better actually. Yeah. All right, take us in number four. Number four, the Fists of Lightning. Uh, Fists of Lightning is a blessing that targets a Psyker. Lost fire in effect. Psyker adds one to his strength and attacks. In addition, each Psyker, eh, sorry, each time a Psyker hits an enemy unit in close combat, that unit suffers two additional strength five AP blank hits. So he's stronger. He's faster. He's better. He's harder. <laughs> His fists are lightning. That punk. Yeah. <laughs> we can rebuild him. Yeah, he no, becomes a $6 million okay. man. Yeah, he, he's okay. He's cool. He's, uh, I don't know. You're not usually counting on your Psyker to do extra hits in close combat. Um, but, yeah, man, it, it, could be, it could be a lot worse. Uh, on Tiki, that'd be kind of cool because you go up to strength seven on your staff with four attacks. Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. Yeah. yeah, and then every time he hits, he does an extra strength five hit. Yeah. Uh, Plus, that, if you're, if you're going to be fishing for powers on this, Tiggy's the guy to take, right? Reroll. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we saw a similar power to this over on Librarius as well. It's the the mighty heroes, the plus two strength, toughness, initiative, and attacks. And that one, that one is baller. That, that one is really awesome. good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chris. Well, I always get the hard one to say, but magnetokinesis. Oh, you nailed it, man. Yeah. So it's a Warp Charge 2, which kind of let me down because... Um, so I'll get into it, and then I'll let you know why it let me down. So it basically allows you to make a... As long as you're not zooming, swooping, or locked in close combat, the locked in close combat part kind of sucks. Um, you can basically get a free 18-inch move, and you get to ignore terrain and things like that, but you can't assault. Yep. Um, you still count as moving for shooting. Uh, but it's it was kind of a letdown in that there's other powers that let you move, charge... Um, leave combat so for me this thing had too many restrictions to be a warp charge 2 if it was a warp charge 1 I'd be like okay I'm on board with that it's a free move yep. but as it stands I think you're paying way too much warp charge because that's like that's literally if you're counting on this to get out of the way it's that's like I would throw like 5 dice or 6 dice but I'm a conservative um, dice thrower so yeah and it's, kind of it's also worth noting this one gets heavily overshadowed by the next power. That that's kind of what I was alluding to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So number six here, the one that got everyone's panties in a bunch, electro displacement, warp charge two, blessing that targets a single non-vehicle unit within twenty-four inches. Remove all models in the target unit except one, and swap the position of the psyker with that model. Then set up all models from the psyker's unit within six inches and in unit coherency of the psyker and set up all remaining models from the swap models unit within six inches of coherency of that model. So basically you take this unit and this unit and swap them. Mm -hmm. If that unit was locked in combat, the displaced unit is now locked in combat. Models cannot otherwise be placed within one inch of an enemy model. Units locked in close combat, uh, in, sorry, unless locked in close combat, these units can charge in the same turn. So if you want to see this abused at its finest, Frontline did a video uh, battle report the day this came out. And it basically consisted of a giant star of rune priests, iron priests, and something else, making like 60-inch charge moves all around the table. It's uh, yeah. it's heavily heavily abusable. Um, this should this should be warp charge three to four because yeah. there's no restrictions in it. Like for that level, it's it's okay to have that level of ability with no drawbacks. Like I guess you have to swap a unit. What do you do? But like there's just no. You're not paying for the drawbacks, as in like other powers. Like it feels like yeah. it's like too much. So this power is just like so much better than everything else in this in this uh, discipline. Yeah, th yeah, this combined with draw pods was was the craziest thing. You basically just take like a naked tactical squad and you just trade places with wherever that pod comes in turn one and charge. <laughs> yeah. 
So. Yeah, this is this is the kind of power that just makes it just like, oh well, I didn't really feel like enjoying this game anyway. I think you rolled a six. Good job. Good <laughs> yeah, job there, you go. Go. But, there you go. There you go. Hard to bubble wrap too you for nerfing the the power. Yeah, I I appreciate that. I definitely was part of that vote and saying, just no, like this is just the, I I don't want to do this. Yeah. Um, I played against unnerfed electro displacement at ETC and it was it was just making people sad. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's one of those it things that fun. even even if you can realistically deal with it, it just it takes away a lot of the fun of the game. And there are a couple things like it's the same thing with like the two plus rerollable save. It's like yeah, you can get around it. There are ways like stomp is a great way to get around it, but it's just not fun to play against, right? Yeah, yeah, you're just not interacting. You're just yeah. at that point you're getting charged and taking models off. You know? Yeah, 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 exactly. So now. I, I, I'm going to go first with this. So my opinion on this lore is that it, it would never even hit my radar except for that six spell. Yep. And because of that, if you're playing a combat Death Star, I'd almost guarantee you take Tiggy. I would roll on this every time. If I played like a Bark Bark Star or a Wolf Star, and I would I would literally just keep rolling until I got that six. Maybe start with Tigerius or end with Tigerius. I'm not sure which direction you want to go with that, but you would put all your dice on this to guarantee that spell because you could win a game in one turn. Yep. So in in unnerfed versions, right? Is that what you're talking in, about? In the yeah, unnerfed I'm, I'm, I'm right? going unnerfed. Yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. I'm I'm with you. I think uh, if you, if you're playing in something that does not have comp on this, build you can build a list around it and very successfully pull it off. Uh, the only thing that can stop you is a Klexus, and realistically, if it's stopping you from doing this, you can just move out of the way and then cast it. So yeah, I, I don't see. I don't even see you. Yeah, the Kalexis probably can't even stop you there. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. If you teleport next to it, great, whatever, just multi-charge it. Oh, your buffs are off, kill the Kalexis. Okay. Cool. Yeah, exactly, and then you're fine. Um, yeah. That's that's the only downside with the ITC nerf, is the ITC nerf makes Fulmination not playable. Yeah, it, which make, I'm it okay makes okay with. I am okay with that, but I'm just saying it's it's unplayable with that spell nerfed. Yeah. I, I don't think I agree. I think it's still actually a pretty good spell because you can get a near uh you can get like an incredible charge off, not to mention it's really good for shooting Death Stars. Because you can swap places, get different angles, yeah. that kind of thing, right? So um, it's good, but would you rather roll on this to fish for it or would you just go for gate? Um well this one's actually more reliable than or more um um, more it's, control. It, than yeah, I, I agree with that no, for sure. Yeah, no scatter. You just swap places. That's actually that's actually a pretty big deal. Not to mention waiting one turn with your buffed up Death Star to assault somebody's entire army. Oh, it's not good. Yeah, You're not right. an unreasonable request. Yeah, it's still good. Usually, I, not many. Yeah, not many people can kill an entire Death Star fully buffed in one turn. No, that that's is true. true. That so, is very true. And we got to bow to Dan's mastery of the game. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, I, 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 see, I see your point. As so, a shooting yeah, Death Star, like good. the Scent Star, that'd be pretty solid with that. Yep. Yeah, yep. So, so there, yeah, there's if, still some strength there, but... Yeah, if you're running the Scent Star, actually, these new these new powers, I, I think, can can give you a real comeback for that list. Because between this oh, yeah. and Phase Form on Geokinesis, if, you, if you're playing an un, uncomped version of it, oh, uh, a Phase Form... Actually, even if you're playing the, the ITC version of Phase Form, it doesn't matter. If you can get bad. those two powers, your Scent Star is unbelievably good. You're ignoring mine of sight. You're ignoring cover from the white scars relic, and you're teleporting around the table. That, that's two thumbs up. That's with the I've seen it. Just that's with the nerfs. Cover anyway. Yeah. It's like get out of here. Why are you shooting me through this building? Stop yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> this is inappropriate. <laughs> Stop touching yeah. me. <laughs> Why do you even play with this train, man? Yeah. Jeez. yeah it's like okay, it's fine. We'll just we'll just leave it. So I, I do I do think it's worth noting that this this does uh, fall in with pretty much all of the other tables except maybe librarius in that you're really fishing for one power on this though right you're looking for electro displacement on geokinesis uh depending on your list you're looking for phase form uh if you're playing itc it doesn't matter you're only looking for phase form because shifting worldscape doesn't exist uh if you're playing technomancy you've built a list around it so that's something entirely different uh, but most of these, there's one power, maybe two, that are really, really beneficial for it. So uh, I, I think it's fair to say that if you don't build a list purely around spamming mastery levels to be able to roll these powers, this is one hell of a trap to roll on. Yeah. Like if you just take a min- well, minimum lib conclave with three mastery level two guys, you've got a piss poor chance of getting the power you need, and you're left with crap. Well, to your point too, with the way that it's comped in ITC, you have two shots. Like even an eight an eighteen inch move straight at your opponent isn't terrible for a Death Star because most are moving twelve anyway. 
Um, but you get to move in addition. No, you count as moving. Right? Oh wait, did I? That was mine. For anyway. mag magnetokinesis, you count as moving. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't matter for a sense star. So you get an extra six inches of movement, which is great. Sense star, you triple your movement. It's not yep. terrible, right? Yep. Yeah, no, it's I'll not take bad. Back cool. So that's it for um, fulmination. I think we kind of described it in a nutshell. That concludes all these disciplines. We'll try to hopefully now we have the chaos ones. We can go through those yeah. and check them out when they're available. Be more excited. So, about those, I, I promise. That book. What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I have such high hopes for that book. I am like, I am praying that that book is sweet. Yeah, Me fingers too. are crossed. I'm, Chaos yeah. needs to be good. Chaos is probably the most popular faction. It needs to be great. So I, we're going to move along. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was saying, I, I, every new player I see getting into 40k always plays Chaos. I did it as well. When I came back to 40k, I played Chaos Marines. They're like, they're hot garbage, but they're so, so fun and just such a cool army that I, I'm really hoping they get some love. Yeah, I agree. So we're going to move on. We got a Necron list that we got to pimp up. We were going to wait for uh, Josh, but then I figured we'll give it the Dan treatment because that's uh, just as good. <laughs> I guess for <laughs> Josh. Okay, so um, basically, John wrote us. Um, he's fairly new to our podcast, and he says he likes it. So thanks, John, for the kind words. Um, he generally runs a Decurian detachment. Um, he only plays with painted models, so he sent us a list of all of his models which ones are painted, and he's updated the list since he initially sent it because we had a long backlog of these things to go through. Um, so with that restriction in mind, we have his list of models. He wants us to basically, um, you know, pimp his list and, and see what we can get out of it. So, uh, Logan, you want to start with what you think he should do? Sure. So this is keeping in mind that I am not a Necron player necessarily. Th this is a list that I think is is really good for what you have. Um if you if you tweak it, you you know you add some models. Uh, I think you, this can be even better. But this is been what I came up with, and I think it's fun. Uh, so we've got Decurion, because I know that's what you like to run. Uh, so you've got Reclamation Legion. You've got your five Immortals and a Night Scythe. You've got two units of three Tomb Blades with Nebuloscopes, Particle Beamers, and Shield Veins. Two units of ten Warriors in Ghost Arcs, because Ghost Arcs are like the best thing ever. Uh, like a unit of fourteen Warriors just chilling there. Uh, they're good for holding the objective backfield. You know, your leadership 10, you've got, you put them in cover and you've got your reanimation. It's solid. Uh, then an overlord with a resurrection orb and a war scythe. And we'll get to why in a minute. On top of that, we got our. Uh, there's something missing from this list. Did Hold on. We have a problem. Come back to me. I need to fix this list. <laughs> okay, I, Dan, I deleted something by accident. <laughs> Um, I, like you said, I think the Decarian tends to be the strongest direction most uh, Necrons are going right now. I have seen a couple, like there are some outlier Necron players that are doing some cool things with like with Obsec Marines and, I'm uh, sorry, Obsec uh, Warriors and hopping them around with uh, Monoliths and stuff, which is actually pretty cool. Um, but if Decarian is the way you're going, I think for me the the coolest part of Decarian is the Tomb Blades. I think that, for me, is what's shining uh, as far as that goes. I was actually writing up a list. You don't have as many as I want to put in a list, but I would, I'm would. i actually writing up a list to do 30 uh, Tomb Blades in a Decurion. And that's the primary, you know, offensive strength of that Decurion list. So uh, so why why do you why do you favor Tomb Blades? I like oh they're so for good. the people out there listening. What's the uh, advantage to those? Yeah, well, one thing they they were always pretty cool, but they were also like twice the points in the last book. So now for twenty two points a model, you get a tough five, uh, three plus armor, uh, four plus three animation, uh, ignores cover, twin linked, strength five AP four, uh, rapid fire gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that can the bit and the big thing for me is uh, it's one of the only things in the book that gets to move twice. So it gets the assault jump, right, in the uh, in the assault phase, because it's a jet bike. Um, at least I'm pretty sure. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep, they do. Uh, yep. Not to mention it has move through cover, too. So it can hop around through cover, and you don't care if it's for dangerous terrain. Um, I think I think they are one of the coolest things. There's a lot of units right now that A, can't kill them fast enough, including, I think, actually Eldar. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they can really pump out enough wounds to kill them all before all those strength 5 shots start wearing on jet bikes. Um, um, so yeah, so I was writing up a list that was similar to that. I had a, uh, actually had the flayed ones in because I actually really like flayed ones as silly as that might sound, but they have a lot of attacks with shred, uh, quite good. And then yeah, and infiltrate, right? Sorry, what? 
And they have Infiltrate, which is good. Infiltrate, yeah, exactly. Um, and then again, 4 plus 4 plus. Not bad, man. Not bad. Um, so yeah, I have a minimum Reclamation Legion. Um, I have a Lord, I think, with just the Solar Pulse. Uh, the 30 Tomb Blades with all the cool equipment. Um, nobody in Transports, because as much as I lo like Ghost Arcs, and I have Ghost Arcs, and they're awesome, I, I decided to go for a different direction. Not to mention I didn't have points. Um, yep. And then, yeah, 30 Tomb Blades um, was where I was looking. Yeah, Tomb Blades uh, are the shit. They're yeah. they're so like I play a very heavy shooting Tau army and Tomb Blades are like the bane of my existence. They will eat three Riptides of shooting and maybe two will die. Yeah, they're, they're super crazy durable. To deal with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I I like them a lot too. Cool. All right. So I, like just because uh, a lot of our list of the standard like the standard Decurion, One of my favorite combinations. Um, I've played against it a couple of times. Is the Obelisk Monolith combo. Where you take them both, and so you deep and it, like people laugh. It's scary. I played Eldar with it. It was terrifying. Um, they deep strike them in, armor fourteen all the way around. Um, it makes basically a bubble of dangerous terrain around all your Eldar jet bikes. You start losing one or two, and it's it's believe it or not, Eldar um, bike armies can disappear rather quickly. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's a counter metal cool. list for sure. It did really w super well at BAO uh, LVO this year. Yeah, just yeah. top top the, sixteen. Yeah. The only top thing eight. that um, yeah, yeah. really. Um, counters that is the amount of prevalence of D in the Eldar army. So what I like to do is I like to take, and this is the thing, you don't have a lot of them, but the guy that I played a few times now, um, he took a lot of destroyers, and the destroyers would basically go after my Wraith Knight and my D batteries as well. Like he tried to just tie them up, get those flayed ones in, and hopefully by the time that you deep strike them in, either the D batteries are tied up or the Wraith Knight's gone, so that thing can just run around the board and just ignore Strength 6. And as Dance it, like the Monolith, you can also suck warriors through and you can move them on objectives. You can get into the fragile lines and, and just wreak havoc. And I think it's an excellent combo, personally. Yeah, yeah, 10 Necron Warriors rapid firing into a bike squad should kill it. Oh, yeah. yeah close range. And, yeah. yeah. It's it's yeah. a super, super good list against Eldar if, uh, if they're going for bikes. And if they're spamming warp spiders, they can't hurt those things at all in any way, shape, or form. So. It is, I'd it be worried is about Tau, though. With that army, the two big... You're, you're uh, not doing anything to Tau. That's the problem. That's the, the, you're basically well, screwed. Yeah. But, I mean, Tau also don't have a lot of uh, AV-14 stuff to deal with. Yeah, nobody does nowadays. No, and nobody um, does. So, yeah, yeah AV-14 is a little counter meta, but the thing is, you, you don't have a huge amount of it, right? Like, if I... If you're... Uh, obelisk is in range of, of my army at all, it's, it's going to die in one turn. Just from just from the storm surges, and three riptides hail firing with rending shots will take down one of the monoliths. That's the other thing. Like the the rending people forget about. I, I know you don't necessarily, but with uh, what does that work out to? Uh, Twenty four, uh, forty eight, sixty four rending shots. Probably hitting on like twos or threes. You're getting yeah. you're getting the four hull points through. You need to kill a monolith. I, but I'm even say I don't know if that's necessarily true, especially when the fact that all they're going to do is drop and kill your mark list. That's their primary that's target. They got to stop your D missiles. They have to shut you down for that, right? Yep. If you're rending, you don't have your invuls. Obviously, they tie you up like ten Necron warriors tie up Riptides. You know. Yeah. If they're getting in, yeah, they will. I think they, I think it has an argument. Um, well, I know, yeah, obviously, sixty-four rending shots is a heck of a lot. You still have to roll what sixes and then fives to glance. Yeah, so, so you'll you'll get you'll get four through. I think is is what the math works yeah, out to. You should use four through, but if you have a cover save, you know you yep. can you can easily potentially get a cover save if you deep strike in the right spot. Blah blah blah. There's a lot of you know specific scenarios there. This is but why all tau players should just run seven reptides. Yeah, well, this is, <laughs> I, I, I value these guys, um, especially because of the void control. If you put that obelisk on an objective, nobody's scoring that objective. So I'm playing a demon player, you're all flying up, my obelisk goes down, you can't deal with me, you get your, whatever, your D-shot from Kairos, but, like, that's mine. That's I'm sorry, that objective in the middle of the board, that relic is mine. I'm on it. You can't get near it. Um, you can also go up and form the wall, put the monolith, the obelisk, right next to each other. Um, you can move up, and then some people take, like, a kind of like a Death Star or your Wraiths. They can move up behind it. Yep. You can't see them, you can't shoot them. Then they yeah. pop out and get you. Um... Because, like, I've played it, and the guy did that to me. Puts it right in front. There's a building in the middle of the board. Puts those right next to it. They uh, don't scatter very far. Like, you know, he measured it safely. Bang. Moved his whole army up behind it. Tr just went nuts after my Wraith Knight. 
And the only thing that saved me was that I had a stupid list at the time, and I kind of had a bunker of D cannons, and I was able to just, just kind of just boom, blow up the obelisk yeah. right away. But it's it's it's, I don't know, it's fantastic. It's it's, it's cool. very underrated. It's it's so, absolutely worth trying if you have the models, and it looks like you do. So he does, and they're painted. That's true. Perfect. Yeah, that's Run it, man. Definitely worth trying. Ma yeah. Make nerds cry with models that people think are trash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go, yeah, go show the local guys. Like at least this, anybody listening to Can Hammer is probably thinking, you know, Necrons are are less powered or one of the lower, not even lower tier, but like a tier two book. Um, I think Necrons have uh, an argument to be a high end book yep, for sure. They're yeah. very good. And and then the other issue too is is like so we mentioned that uh, immediately. Oh, that's crap. Every I'm sure the ten people like, well, that's garbage. Well, have you ever so like when I design lists, I think of. Like, like, I'll be like, oh, Dan's Demon List, and I'll kind of play in my head what I should shoot first. I've never played, well, I have personally, but most people never played through their head, oh, i got to deal with an obelisk, i got to deal with a monolith, this is what the guy's going to do to me. So you have this huge advantage over most players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're definitely doing something that people aren't expecting. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Logan, you want to finish off your I, list? I did, I did manage to fix this. So I'm pretty sure you have all these models, and they're all painted. If not, uh, hopefully it's a very minor change. So I went for Decurion, Reclamation Legion, as I said. Uh, five Immortals on foot, because I had to free up some points. Uh, ten Lich Guard with Hyperphase Swords and Dispersion Shields. The two units of three Tomb Blades. Two units of ten Warriors and Ghost Arcs. Uh, a Command Detachment Royal Court with Oricon and Oberon. Uh, then another Overlord with Hyperphase Sword and Veil of Darkness. So you've had the, you've had the double Veil with those two guys. Uh, and then a Harvest on top of that with six Wraiths with Whip Coils. Um, the reason I'm a little hesitant on this, I don't know how well this all meshes together. I think uh, I think Dan or Chris's ideas may be a little a little better way to go. Um, from what I've seen, if you're running the the Witch Star, you probably want to have two harvests, uh, either that, that or like two destroyer cults. Say. But yeah. this uh, th this will still be tough, right? You've got the two two ghost arcs that are running up, and those things are tough as nails, right? A a AV thirteen jinking. Um, they're they're getting where they need to go, and then they're dumping out warriors, and they've got a tremendous amount of firepower as soon as they get near something as well. Uh, I've got two units of super durable, super fast moving tomb blades. Uh, I've got immortals to sit backfield, and then you've got this witch star, which is pretty much killing just about anything it touches with that many AP three attacks. And then you've got the void reaper in there as well on the lord. Um, really, the thing that's gonna screw you on this list is stomps. Um, that's probably one of the few things that can actually take out that star. Uh, the other problem is it is a little slow moving, so you got to be very, uh, you got to play sort of more area denial with that star. The thing is, shooting at it is not really going to kill it, right? You've got a ton of three plus saves, re rolling ones, and then you've got four plus reanimation, re rolling ones, and you've got, uh, if you can fit like a, uh, sorry, there's a res orb on the overlord there as well, so even put him like two guys in, you're really not getting through that unit with shooting. If, I don't shoot that unit. No, I've played you against it. You, you have to you have to ignore that unit or you have to stomp it. Um, but the thing is, you put that against any army that is not as super mobile as uh, as like mass jet bikes or something. You veil in somewhere near it, and that's a quarter of the board your opponent can never go in and is losing everything in. So I totally agree. The only the only issue is that thing. As reading through it, I don't believe in taking one unit of wraiths. Um, yeah, and, I think you, this is I think from you a, a perspective. Harvest. So like he only has one, but that's why I kind of left him out of my my choice there is because if you don't have two, like one unit race I can just deal with, they're gone. But two of them in my grill is a lot harder. So and and I know that some of the Europeans are even running up to three, I believe. Yeah, I, the Finnish team, the Finnish captain at the ETC ran uh, ran eighteen race in Canopic Harvest. That was tough. There's a lot of there's a lot of durable durable yeah. things, you know. Yeah. yeah. And the spiders well, are no joke either. No, the spiders are tough, tough to kill if they're if they're hidden well. I mean, it's a T six monstrous creature, right? You gotta you gotta dedicate some yeah. firepower to it. Yeah. And if you're smart, you just don't match them against because like, it's really hard to kill those spiders unless guys are taking like D knights or things like that. Yeah. So you just match them against something without a lot of D, and those spiders like, it takes a lot of jet bikes to kill those spiders if the guy doesn't have has like a sriracha or whatever. He doesn't have the uh, D knight. So yeah. Cool. So I hope that helped it. That was our kind of take on the Necrons. Uh, your collection is really large, and uh, um, 
so hopefully that helped. Uh, you know, maybe we like to double up on units because we're hardcore tournament gamers, but I know you're a little bit less competitive. So um, let us know. And if you use the obelisk and crush people, like, oh, totally let do. me know, man. Yeah, totally let me so know. Send, send pictures. Send pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So we're going to move on to the last segment of the show. We're going to do question and answers. 